Closer to Farakunku Lodges, Brewfoot Woods is another renowned site that unfortunately seems to be in decline. Encroachment and the planned buildings of a new stadium means much of the denser forest has gone. Open savanna woodland remains and there are still good birds to be seen here, but maybe not for much longer. One of the first birds seen was what appeared to be a recently fledged Rufus cysticola. There was also a blue spotted wood dove. A brief violet turaco. A fork tailed drongo. A calling tawny flanked prinia. And a white billed buffalo weaver in non breeding plumage. A male northern black flycatcher had a perfect perch over the main track. And an immature African cuckoo showed really well in the low branches of an acacia. Although it had begun to lose some barring around the head, the wings still had the distinctive white spotting of a young bird. Nearby was a displaying male western red-billed hornbill. A Senegal kukul perched up nicely on a fence post. It was probably a sub-adult as it still had black and not red eyes and one of a few pearl-spotted owlets present sat out in the open. As we approached the remnant area of forest, we picked out a male western violet-backed sunbird, an uncommon resident of this type of habitat. A molting male beautiful sunbird. A female variable sunbird. a willow warbler, a common winter visitor from northern Europe. A perched fantai sawwing. This is probably a female with shorter tail streamers. And an overhead Alana falcon. In the forest we saw this superb long-tailed nightjar roosting on the ground at what seemed to be a regular stakeout. Only the male has a long tail, so by all appearances this was a female. Drinking pots near what is actually the main entrance attracted lavender wax bells, along with village weavers. plus laughing doves. And black-billed wood doves. On the coast west of Brewfoot Woods is the Tanji Eco Lodge. Close to a reserve and with well stocked drinking and bathing areas, this is a great place for some relaxed birding over lunch. A good range of small passerines visit here, including both orange cheeked and lavender waxbills, bronze mannequins, and red billed firefinches, interestingly, mostly males. The star visitor though was this female western bluebill, sexed on the basis of the spotted belly. Only seen briefly on our second visit, they are uncommon residents, restricted to the southwest of the Gambia, and are generally skulking and unobtrusive. Feeding and bathing sites are often the best places to see them.
a wary male black cap would also come down to the shallow pools. As on one occasion did this garden warbler. Common bulbuls often crowded around the water pops, sometimes joined by splendid sunbirds. A developing black chest on this splendid sunbird shows it to be a juvenile male. Here it's joined by a smaller molting male beautiful sunbird. And this is an immature male beautiful sunbird. Other regular visitors included black-necked weavers. All seem to be females and juveniles. This race is often now treated as a separate species, olive-naped weaver, as there are significant plumage differences from those found across Central and Eastern Africa particularly the paler eye and olive rather than black nape. Not surprisingly, village weavers also enjoyed the spa. Although common, blue spotted wood doves can often be shy and wary, but here they were very approachable. as were black-billed wood doves. African thrushes were around, but rarely visited the pools. In the trees around the lodge, a foraging female northern puffback eventually located a tasty pupa. And a yellow-fronted tinkerbird seemed to be a regular caller. The nearby village of Tanji is a bustling place, seemingly at the centre of much that goes on locally. Away from its hectic fish market, the beach has a typical range of shoreline birds. Most of these were grey-headed gulls. A few adults still had the grey hood of breeding plumage. But most were molting and in their alternative winter attire. In this plumage they look very similar to the familiar black-headed gull of Eurasia, particularly when standing. They appear somewhat more sturdily built, however, with a more sloping forehead accentuatingly a longer, slightly heavier bill. They are more distinctive when they take flight, with a characteristic primary pattern. Some youngsters still had the gingery wash of juveniles, whilst others were more advanced into first winter plumage. Amongst the gulls was a small flock of winter plumaged ruddy turnstones and a foraging pied crow. This was also a good site for ospreys. Plus a squadron of immature pink-backed pelicans passed overhead. Within walking distance of Farakunku lodges, Tujuring pits are a series of lagoons created by commercial sand mining, lying just inland of the coast. Birds filmed here included spur-winged lapwings,
guaco heron. Little grebe. Senegal kukuls. And though largely obscured, one of the few oriole warblers seen on the trip. Overhead was a black winged kite. The habitat suggests migration periods would be best here, as it's a quiet area of the coast. And there is always the small beach bar to relax at during the heat of the day. A little further south, Tujuring Woods is another excellent site. A bit of a misnomer, as the area is more cultivation than woodland. Scanning the fields and low-lying bushes revealed a rather distant woodchat shrike. A more obliging preening black-crowned chagra. a singing, whistling cysticola. A mobile troop of green wood hoopoos. And with a few northern grey-headed sparrows, a pair of chestnut-crowned sparrow weavers. They are not particularly rare, but can easily be overlooked amongst flocks of commoner species. One was carrying nesting material. A few larger trees were dotted around the landscape. Here we found a perched grey kestrel. a flock of greater blue-eared starlings and a male variable sunbird a species that until then hadn't been easy to see well. The woodland is simply a small copse of silk cotton trees but is a real haven for birds. As we approached we disturbed a pair of African grey hornbills. An African cuckoo perched nearby. And our first Vaillot's barbet showed reasonably well. As did this male from a pair of Senegal Bartis. As we entered the woodland, we were met by a striped kingfisher. The sexes are hard to tell apart, unless you see the underwing, but females tend to have a browner crown and are less streaky below. Next up was a more active scarlet-chested sunbird. A mottled throat and streaked underparts identified it as a female. and a pair of beautiful sunbirds. The characteristic call of venaceous doves seemed to be everywhere. We settled down near a small feeding station where amongst the most regular visitors were yellow-fronted canaries. All showed some mottling on the throat, meaning they were a mixture of females and juveniles. Nearby, a presumed family party of yellow penduline tits arrived. 
This is an old weaver nest and not theirs. Up to five were involved in inspecting the nest from inside and out, presumably searching for insects. They are usually hard to see well, so getting this close was a real privilege. There were also good views of an aptly named male white-fronted black chat. A female Diederik cuckoo put in a brief appearance, but a couple of classes cuckoos were more obliging. Both appeared to be young birds, this one showing barring on the wing coverts, but a more developed white patch behind the eye. And although only obvious when it flew, this individual being more obviously barred below. Both male brown-backed and male cardinal woodpeckers were here. Presumably both had local territories as neither appreciated the other's company. The slightly larger cardinal seemed to be the chief protagonist, but the brown-backed stood his ground. Following an obvious passage overhead, small flocks of swallows landed in the trees around us to preen. Most were red-chested swallows, similar to the migrant barn swallow, but with whiter underparts, rufous on the throat extending onto the upper breast, and certainly in adults, shorter tail streamers. Only one barn swallow was seen, this rather more distant lone juvenile. There were also rufous chested swallows. The individual on the left is a juvenile, being browner with shorter tail streamers. The adult on the right is molting, but still showed the diagnostic rufous rump, incomplete collar, and dark cheeks, even if its plumage looked rather tatty. On leaving the woodland, we managed to get reasonably close to an Abyssinian roller, perched on a low bush. However, this purple roller remained stubbornly difficult to approach.